Welcome back to Talk with TQ. I am so pleased today to have one of my favorite people in Peekskill, New York. Her name is Sol Miranda. Sol is the co-founder and director of outreach for the performing arts entity in Peekskill. This is where um, all the collective, um, the collective performing arts um, people, performing artists, actually converge to get a little recognition and to actually say their piece in Peekskill. I've been very privileged to work with them, you know, as, an, as a visual artist, but I really appreciate the fact that Sol does so well at connecting with the pr performing artists in Peekskill. As a performing artist herself, she is, has actually recently um, achieved the honor, and I guess it's an esteem, to be chosen for a role on an upcoming, I think currently untitled, sitcom in, in, on NBC with Tina Fey. Welcome, Saul. Thank you so much for coming to the show. There's so much to say about you that I trip all over my own words, so I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> Don't you worry, and thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Um, well, uh, what can I say? It's, it's, it's been very busy here in Peekskill with Embark Peekskill, as yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. the, it's a nonprofit coalition of performing and literary artists, and uh, we have a big vision to uh, establish and develop a space, a performing arts center mm -hmm. for Peekskill, where we can present local and internationally renowned artists as well, because we have some internationally renowned we artists do. in Peekskill, such as Daisy Joplin, mm -hmm. we have Rebel Baroque. Mm -hmm. um, so they are actually both members of Embark. So as a nonprofit, uh, we are now at a space uh, embark at EMC on 925 South Street. Right. And then, like you also said, I have had the amazing blessing opportunity to be cast in the upcoming Tina Fey and Robert Cardlock uh, sitcom. Actually, I just found out <clears throat> that it has been titled. Oh. Uh, originally was titled Token, that is T O O K E N. Okay. And uh, then it was untitled, and now I believe the new, the new one is, and I think to stay is Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. That's oh. the new title of the sitcom. <clears throat> that sounds um, like Yiddish to me. Right? Yes. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's good, but no. Uh, I, well, I don't. I don't think it's uh, in order to um, have some kind of um, Yiddish um, undertone. Right. But uh, the lead, mm -hmm. um, played by Ellie Kemper from Bridesmaids oh. and The Office, she was, she performed in The Office during its last year, I okay. think. I right. was not following the show um, by the end of it, but uh, I hear that she was amazing. She's, uh, she is very talented and super intelligent uh, actress, um, naturally funny. And a wonderful, generous um, uh, performer, uh, colleague, if you will. Um, so Ellie Kemper is the lead, and her character's name is Kimmy Schmidt. Kimmy Schmidt. So what part do you play? The part I play, uh, her name is Donna Maria. Donna Maria. Yes, and she's a Spanish-speaking uh, mm -hmm. character, no-nonsense, down-to-earth, she makes fun of the other ladies yeah. because the premise of the uh, sitcom is that these ladies uh, were um, abducted by a crazy doomsday cult leader, right? Okay. But when the pilot, when you see the pilot, they are actually liberated, they escape, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, the lead, uh, Kimi, mm -hmm. when, inter when they come to New York City, yeah. uh, the four of us, Kimmy decides to stay in New York City and start a new life, right? Okay. Because pretty much she did not know what life was in the real world for like 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. So she is definitely unbreakable, she's tough, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time, she's full of innocence. Mm -hmm. And so you see the juxtaposition of 
feistiness and fieriness and at the same time her innocence, getting to know the world again for the first time. And the viewers will learn that through her eyes, you know. So tell me about your part. I mean, you're, you have a recur recurring role, so yes. you're part of the cast. Mm -hmm. How did they Not find... Not regular, recurring. recurring. So That's okay. Recurring's good. Oh, it is very good. You know, Trust sometimes me. people turn, tune in just to see that, you know, uh, recurring peripheral character for whatever reason. Well, even for a day player, it's, um, it's an honor as a working actor to have a day player in a show especially episodic tv but yes no i am i i can't complain i am very happy how did they find you well i have an agent a wonderful agent her name is cynthia katz mm -hmm. from gotham talent agency mm -hmm. um in new york and uh she called me about a month and a half ago hey tomorrow an audition for this <laughs> tina fey show she's yeah. the producer one of the producers and and one of the writers um uh, Next day I'm there and uh, the audition, you know, the casting office was quite full of actresses. Uh, I think that day they were looking at many, many Latina actresses mm -hmm. for the role of Dona Maria. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, she only speaks Spanish, but she makes fun of the other ladies. Um, I could um, imagine. Oh, she makes fun of the, uh, of the other ladies big time. But... Um, um, so, you know, it was another audition in the life of an actor where, especially if it's that high stake audition uh, opportunity, you see many, many actors right there with you in the room. So it was great. The audition went great. Then the next day I had to go to a callback, which was a different kind of callback. As you know, you're an actress as well. Well, kind of. Well, but you know the you know the yeah you get called back sometimes you just get the part without even auditioning that happens yeah as well you know the callback uh, usually you go to meet the director mm -hmm. and a few producers and it's just uh, the three of you in the room and the casting director of course but this callback was special was unique uh, we had to go to Rockefeller Center okay and um, we had a little rehearsal and. Really, little did I know that uh, we were going to do a table read at a screen room with 200 seats in What's front it? of executives and crew members. I mean, there were like 200 people 200 listening. People. What's a table read? A table read is exactly that. Uh, uh, you, the, the actors sit around mm -hmm. the table to read the script in front of... Um, the a few, you know, a few members of the show, like uh, producers, um, and uh, sometimes there is no audience, so it's just a table read among the actors, the director, yes. Yeah, yeah. Were you the only actor getting a table read? Were there other people there to do a table read? Oh, no, all, all, of, all of the actors okay. uh, for the pilot um, okay. were there, but this table read slash callback was no guarantee, was no offer. Yeah. So, so imagine, just like a callback. So I imagine you've been in this situation many times because your career spans over 20 years. I was reading your bio yes. and you've done a few things. You've been cast as um, um, a performer, a character on Law and Order. Yeah. 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 And yeah. That, twice, right? Three times, actually. Three times. Three times I did, you know, three day players. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful, me. but, you know, not, not... Tell me about those parts. I'm curious. Well, you know, uh, day players, uh, which is the same as what they call co-star, uh -huh. uh, they are necessary for us working actors. Mm -hmm. And when we get them, we are so happy to do them. Yeah. Uh, basically, you know, a social worker once, um, mm -hmm. a nanny another time, okay. um, custodial another time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, just one scene. Um, then I also played more of a guest star in the show that it was playing until last year. I think it only played for um, a year. Okay. Uh, the, a Gifted Man. Yeah. A Gifted Man. Mm -hmm. That one was a very nice um, show, and also I got a nice exposure during that episode yeah. with three scenes, so it was nice. more of a guest star. Um, and I was playing the mother of, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, was grieving because her son had been 
killed in a drive-by shooting. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, that I, was you. <laughs> that was yeah, you. That was, no, thinking, that was you. Okay. And um, <laughs> and Blue Bloods. I was in the pilot of mm -hmm. Blue Bloods that mm -hmm. I still still playing. So you really had quite a journey. It's not like suddenly you got a phone call and there you are on a Tina Fey sitcom. Mm -hmm. So you, you, I've read a little bit of your bio, actually a lot of it. I'll admit, I've been like sort of cyber stalking you a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you've actually done opera, you've done theater. Well, not opera. Uh, I don't sing. I'm not a trained singer. I can carry a tune, yes. uh, but, um, and I love singing, but uh, in the shower. Uh, <laughs> the um, opera thing, I trained, um, I did extensive training in this um, training called Suzuki okay. a, a, a technique, training. Suzuki. Uh, it's not the music training mm -hmm. uh, for violin or piano. Mm -hmm. And I also trained in the viewpoints training under Anne Bogart, which is an avant-garde director, mm -hmm. uh, very respected all over, uh, around the world. Yeah. So she has a theater company mm -hmm. called uh, City Company, okay. uh, that is S-I-T-I, -I. Mm -hmm. and uh, they, they are amazing. They do really postmodern uh, work that okay. is very physical, mm -hmm. very compositional, mm -hmm. uh, a la Robert Wilson, mm -hmm. and... Um, she directed and conceived her own version of Seven Deadly Sins by Vile. Oh, wow. And uh, we, I was, believe it or not, one of the dancers. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. but in this technique, it's more of a postmodern mm -hmm. uh, dance. Uh, that was, of course, before I had my two kids. Yeah. Uh, I had a different body. <laughs> well, we all had a different body. But point. as an actor, I like... Mm -hmm. And I always trained rigorously in areas that demanded a lot of physicality mm -hmm. from the actor. That's okay. how I work. So you actually, um, I've seen you at Embark, and I can see that, that you are like the quintessential actor. So at Embark, what do you do in terms of working with people that are performing artists? Because I know that um, you're so highly respected in peak skill for this. Oh. Thank and you. Yet, Such an honor. Such an honor. But you, you somehow managed to maintain a very high level of humility, which I imagine might be somewhat challenging when all of a sudden you're going to be a star. <laughs> um, no, I am not a star. <laughs> I, well, I am a working actor, and mm -hmm. um, I am, first of all, again, thank you for having me here. I owe so much to the community. The community has been so supportive of me mm -hmm. uh, and also of Embark and Katie. Yes. Katie Schmidt-Fader Schmidt is Fader, yes. the, um, also the other co-founder mm -hmm. and executive director of Embark. And, and uh, a performing artist herself. And she's an amazing performer and director mm -hmm. who herself has major credits as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, she was uh, selected in the prestigious uh, Director's Lab wow, that's, that's at uh, Lincoln Center. That's something. How did you guys meet? How did you meet? How did well, she meet you? Yeah, that's the actual origins of Embark. We are both mothers who moved to Peekskill wow. from Brooklyn. We didn't know each other before that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you, I, you both lived in Brooklyn. Yeah, but we didn't know each other. Wow, and actually, okay. I think she also lived in Park Slope or near okay. Park Slope, mm -hmm. as I did as well. You know, we met because our kids, speaking up our kids at first Hebrew mm -hmm. uh, preschool, um, she had her kids there, I had my kids there, we mm -hmm. bumped into each other, oh, I'm an actor, I'm an actor. And then two years later, we met again through the school district because her daughter and my son are in the same um, school grade. Okay. And that's how we started talking. And actually, it was Katie, the one who saw the need, the one who um, pretty much saw the why of Embark. Uh, we have the beautiful Paramount, an amazing la landmark. Yes. But it's really not a theatrical space or a performing arts center conducive to uh, arts and education. There's mm -hmm. no classroom, uh, there's no wing space. There, not that we have a wing space at Embark 
at EMC mm -hmm. because it's a small studio, but uh, that's the big vision, right? Mm -hmm. So Katie actually, while well, she was acting in Cats by Antonia, at Scarlet Antonia, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, she decided, you know, we need a space that can have not only a couple of performing arts spaces, small and medium size, mm -hmm but also classrooms, so teaching can happen there, and also rehearsal studios. So not only the local artists, but artists from the area mm -hmm. can, you know, come to this space and network, collaborate, foster each other, mm -hmm. do their own thing, and also perform a space that you can have resident solo artists, uh, performers and writers, and also resident companies right now we have a couple of resident companies that embark such as hand hand to mouth players okay um and uh, we have also um now or never productions now or never I productions that. from um i believe they're from elmsford and okay. they presented a play last um last fall it's interesting that they moved so a little bit further north to be involved with Embark. It's and you know why? Because Big Steel is happening. Big Steel is happening. Yeah. It's yeah. true. The performing artists are, are amazing around here. I'm wondering if um, what Embark will be doing during the open studios that's coming in June. I'm just curious as to if, if there's anything planned or is everybody on their own? I know with the um, visual artists we have sort of a cohesive entity as well. Yes, yes, yes. It's so amazing what PAA Big Skill mm -hmm. Arts Alliance, you're a member, mm -hmm. what you guys are doing as well, and what you've been doing for a long, long time, well, like 20 years, right? Um, PAA is pretty new, and thanks to Maureen, the new, the new Maureen name. Winsig, yes. it's actually a viable entity. Absolutely. I have to give her prep, you know, credit for that, because I kind of, in the steering committee, saw what went on there, and she's amazing as well, but I'm, I can imagine the two of you can work somewhat together from occasionally absolutely yes uh, it's all about collaboration Thank and you. I um, that yes uh, actually if I can say this as well in one week next Saturday May mm -hmm. May 17th we're going to have one of our members a seasoned performer dancer founder of a New York City based dance company mm -hmm. inner landscapes mm -hmm. dance theater Nomi Bakar yes she is going to be at Embark and show three uh, performances, three dance performances on film, and she will also, it's, it's also a book signing event. Mm -hmm. uh, her new book, Gates of Power Method, is out. Mm -hmm. And so she will be reading excerpts from the book and mm -hmm. uh, connect how the journey of an artist mm -hmm. and her journey as a counselor, life coach, mm -hmm. have connected, have met in order yeah. to heal others, in order, in, order, in, in order to help others transform their lives mm -hmm. for the better. So that's on May 17th at 8 at Embark. Um, and then, yes, in conjunction with Open Studios on June 7th, we are going to present Barry Mangione's oh, nice. The Graft, mm -hmm. which is an interactive multimedia mm -hmm. concert of original songs about pretty much the power of healing. Barry Mangione is also a life coach mm -hmm. who uh, is a recovered alcoholic mm -hmm. and uh, all the work that he's doing as a musician is actually, you know, comes from that, informed from that. And also in that concert, he actually, you will see a lot of visual artists, local visual artists works projected, mm -hmm. that's why multimedia, and also there will be, you can tweet Mm -hmm. So he okay. will ask, so it's interactive, you can tweet or not, it's your choice, mm -hmm. but you will see in another screen, all of, anonymously, all, all of the people responding to his questions while he's playing some of these amazing songs. That's a really good thing to do. I've seen that done. NBC did that for Education Nation. So that will be on June 7, uh, June 7 p.m. 7. and Embark, yes. Sounds fabulous. So you're really, you know, moving and shaking, it sounds like. Now tell me, you know, I see that you have a very extensive career. Um, I think the audience, the people that are not performing artists might be curious to see what is it like when you get to the point that you're at now where you're like there, you're like standing on the a cusp, you're not even on the cusp anymore, but you've taken some hard knocks along the way. Auditioning, the rejection, I mean, what is, what is that like and what do you do within yourself 
to enable that spirit to keep persevering so that you can actually strive and thrive to get to the point where you're now on like NBC, which I always think of NBC as like the New York Times of television. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't say that, but well, they, I think they they're going to be very happy with you if they hear you say that, you know. Should be. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, funny that you say that. Uh, yesterday I was reading a an article on this uh, very well-known musical theater actor who has gotten so many nominations, Danny Bernstein. Okay. Uh, he ac we actually went to the same MFA program in California. Mm -hmm. He was in a class ahead of me. Okay. Um, and he is amazing and deserves all of the awards and nominations he has received thus far. Mm -hmm. um, he said, in order to be in this career, you have to commit 200%. There are no guarantees. It's 99% rejection. So 99% you, you rejection. You cannot do anything else. Yeah. This is, you have to think, this is the only thing. This is my calling. This is my vocation. This is the only thing I can do. Mm -hmm. It's like the air you breathe. You, yeah. cannot, you cannot do anything else. If that is... If the answer is yes, mm -hmm. that you're willing to <laughs> to suffer yes. uh, uh, in the journey mm -hmm. at the same time and accept and not take it personal, that we, of course, take it personal. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, um, if you don't develop that thick skin, then you should not be a performer. You should not be an artist, period, because yeah. it is very hard. And it's not you cannot do it for the money. Right. As we know, there's no... There's no steady salary. I mean, you yeah. can go into teaching, mm -hmm. uh, which I have done mm -hmm. at a college, yes. you know, um, but still maintaining the freedom so I can go to auditions, so I can keep acting. Right. So in teaching, um, um, are you teaching performing arts? Are you teaching theater? Like right now, I teach a movement for the actor class. Okay. And I teach at a, at a college. Mm -hmm. And the same in the same college, I teach... Um, public speaking, mm -hmm. uh, and I have taught acting as well, but yes. this semester I'm teaching those two courses. Okay, and how is that, do you find that, that you're actually learning from the students as well? Always, yeah. always, we, we, we don't stop, we don't stop learning, actually, mm -hmm. someone was quoting the other day, Pablo Casal, saying, mm -hmm. you know, when, <laughs> at the age of 70 something, Wow. You know, practicing, const constantly practicing his instrument. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, oh, wow, I'm getting better at this. A master. <laughs> See? I know. He's you a man know? in his 70s, right? Right. You know, the, the, the amazing uh, artist that he was, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in, you know, playing his uh, instrument, uh, the cello, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, a master really acknowledges that he or she has to keep on getting better at his craft. Yes, yes. And learn from others, even from, you know, young and old. Do you, have a, do you have a mentor or somebody that you would say was your inspiration along the way? It could, sometimes people have someone that's not living anymore, but that's their inspiration. And then very, sometimes you have like what they say, you have a rabbi that's kind of like helping you make the right choices. Or were you just completely organically soul? Is there anybody that inspired you? Who inspired you? Well, who inspired me? The source of great inspiration is, you know, for me is God, okay. you know, but also my father, Your my father, father um, who is no longer in this plane. Mm -hmm. He is my main inspiration. I mean, I, I love my mother, but yeah. I, my father and I were really connected somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he understood this is a man who was an engineer, uh -huh. and um, he was not afraid to support my decision to become an actor. I mean, he could have told me, oh no, get something else that will give you your steady check, and then do this on the side like a hobby. Mm -hmm. And um, no, he, when I had my conversation with him when I was 17, mm -hmm. and I said, I wanna be an actor, I wanna go to the drama department at the University of Puerto Rico, you mm -hmm. know, theater as my major. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, go for it. And I was like, yeah. what? Wow, that's <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, after my dad, I've had 
so many wonderful mentors, not only teachers in my path, mm -hmm. but also fellow actors. And and now in Peak Skill, Peak Skill, I have fellow community members like you who are inspiring, like Maureen, like my partner, uh, Katie, other, also other um, business um, supporters of Embark who inspire me because they believe that Peak Skill is great. Do you think that Peak Skill, I, I mean, I'll say this, how do you feel that, that Peak Skill, how Peak Skill's been changed by Embark? It seems that the performing artists, there is an artist community, but it seems like there are certain entities that kind of make us more cohesive. Do you, do you see that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, Embark uh, right now is... Um, a major artery in this wonderful beating heart mm -hmm. that it because you know there's Big Skill Arts Alliance and there are other entities that reinforce that are part of this wonderful heart if you will yeah. mm -hmm. and I think we're a major artery now we've been Embark has existed for three years for two years we have been at our stepping stone space mm -hmm. at the Energy Movement Center building, thanks to Darby Melnick, yes. who welcomed us to the first floor of that building. Yeah. And I just want to say that Embark is important, and we're about to launch a fundraising campaign mm -hmm. uh, beginning June 2nd, okay. And uh, because we need to move to the next step. Mm -hmm. We need to... Uh, Katie and I are still, you know, uh, volunteering. We're uh, uh, on salaried mm -hmm. staff, mm -hmm. and uh, we do it with a passion and love. And uh, we need we need to support our programming. We would like to also refurbish the space a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, beginning June second, some you know people will hear that we would be more than appreciative to be supported uh, financially by by you know. By the community. By the community. Yes. So, okay, so if someone wants to learn more, they can go to the Embark website. Why don't you tell us what the Embark website URL is? Well, you can go to EmbarkPeakSkill.com. You can also email us at EmbarkPeakSkill at gmail.com. Yes. There you go. Okay. So that's really great. I'm, I'm very, very pleased. And speaking of heart, I have a, a heart for you, and Peakskill has a heart for you. And I'm glad that you'll, I imagine, you'll carry Peakskill in your heart as you Absolutely. go forth in your career and I'm, I'm really so pleased about your success. Thank you so much. It's so Tony. nice to see nice people get great breaks and you deserve it. Thank you know you. you've always maintained a very pure and positive and empowering attitude and I thank you for coming to the show and you'll have to come back after you it airs we can talk about all the parties we'll have watching you on TV. <laughs> my pleasure. Yay! Thank you for having me. Such an honor. It's my pleasure. And I'll thank the audience for coming back to listen and, and, and to my new, my latest guest. I always have interesting guests on, on um, Talk with TQ. And thank you so much, Soul Miranda, for coming. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>